Greetings and welcome to the next edition of the EY Mobility Reimagined video dialogue series, Defining the Future of Mobility. My name is Rachel Dargenio and I am the EY America's Mobility Markets Leader. I'm incredibly excited to be here today with my colleague Maureen Flood, our EY America's Hybrid Work Suite Leader. Over the course of several weeks, we will be joined by our mobility colleagues from around the world to discuss the future of mobility the broader talent agenda of the future, cross-border compliance risk, and of course, employee engagement and retention in a remote world. We are thrilled to host these sessions and we'll be starting off today with a focus on hybrid work. Maureen, you have shared with me that many organizations are looking to the mobility function as they activate hybrid work. So is mobility really the hybrid work activation hero? Rachel, it's great to be here with you. I'm sure you've heard it a hundred times before. Hybrid work is here to stay, or you can work from anywhere. But what do those words mean? The word hybrid means the combination of two different things. The EY 2021 Work Reimagined Employee Survey reported that nine out of 10 employees have stated that flexibility in where and when they work is paramount in creating a valued work experience for the future. As we engage with organizations, the flexibility around where and when is the foundation of these new hybrid work programs. Organizations recognize the need for flexibility. Every day, I'm hearing more and more from clients that the fight for talent is the single most important item on the C-suite agenda. How can we retain our people, attract new talent, and deal with the so-called mass talent exodus that some organizations are experiencing. On the talent front, we're seeing that business leaders are offering internal mobility to build capabilities of the future and to accelerate careers. That supported with hybrid work and flexibility is even more important in the new world where remote work provides opportunities for those who may not have been able to relocate across borders in the traditional sense. That really does paint the picture that hybrid work is the future. Doesn't it, Rachel? I couldn't agree with you more, Maureen. Hybrid is here to stay. These issues are complex, and there really is just one function that knows how to deal with change and uncertainty and enable an organization to have a global mindset towards talent. You know it, I know it, and everyone listening knows it, the mobility function. Mobility's understanding of these issues and ability to bring together the key stakeholders across the organization while being able to act as project management office, gives mobility the opportunity to really pioneer the hybrid work agenda. That's right, Rachel. The mobility function is absolutely enabling hybrid work. Now, it's not easy to implement, but when done correctly, it can create a world of opportunities, including access to wider talent pools, retention and engagement opportunities with teams, flexibility for families, individuals, and teams, and learning and development opportunities. So Maureen, let's dive into it. I'm sure you're hearing about all of these benefits and of course, all of the risks on a daily basis. What I'd like to know is this, what is mobility's role in activating a hybrid work program? That's a great question, Rachel. There are several factors we need to consider when thinking about operationalizing a hybrid work initiative. Alongside the greater flexibility for work location, regulatory and legislative changes are increasing and creating risks that need to be addressed in line with a global talent strategy. We know the compliance risks are abundant, but as organizations explore portions of their workforce working in hybrid ways, a few should be focus areas in your governance framework. Employees may unknowingly trigger tax, legal, and regulatory compliance risks. Alternative ways of working can create productivity and performance concerns that need to be balanced with ways to encourage teaming, collaboration, and a consistent approach to employee well being. Employee health, safety, and security need to remain top of mind for organizations. For the appropriate governance and to manage risks, 
Organizations will need to align their mobile employee strategy to their talent framework and implement policies with a predetermined approach to establish operating parameters and controls. Now, Rachel, I know that's a lot to consider, and we all know these risks exist, but the question I keep getting asked is this, how do we operationalize a program to enable hybrid working while managing risk? We've established that mobility is the hero as the only function to be able to consider all these risks with a holistic mindset and bring different parts of the organization together. But where do we go from here? I know it sounds complicated, but for me, there are three steps to define your strategy to enable your hybrid work program. And I like to think of these phases as design, implement, and execute. The design phase is about asking yourself all of the questions you need to consider when operationalizing your vision. Does my current infrastructure allow for workflow and tracking? What roles and job functions are eligible to be conducted in a flexible or hybrid work model? Will I allow employees to work in another jurisdiction outside of the employee's home office? What risks am I exposed to if I do? The implementation phase is about implementing your vision, which includes leveraging existing or external tracking mechanisms and technologies, defining the parameters to enable employees to work in another location, such as duration, location, or activity-based roles, and building your processes, policies, and decision trees. Lastly, we have the execute phase. Once your program is in place, you need to ensure that you validate the risks before enabling each employee to work in a hybrid way. You can use the technology to enable that risk management process. Here, you would also execute on compliance requirements such as payroll, immigration, and tax. It really can be that simple and mobility is primed to not only run the program day to day, but to find the talent agenda for the future along with HR, talent, payroll, and other business functions charged with designing hybrid work models that enable your vision. Rachel, I totally agree. It doesn't need to be overwhelming, does it? Taking these steps now ensures that the organization can set up the workforce of the future, whatever shape that workforce may take. And let's be honest, many companies with mobile workforces already faced these risks before the pandemic. And employees had always traveled for business, been in commuter roles, or had flexible work arrangements for personal reasons. Many people have checked emails on vacation and even taken the odd call or two. What's different now is that requests to work flexibly are top of mind for employees. And so authorities are catching on. But one more important thing we haven't yet touched on is the topic of data. Greater use of technology and data analytics can be the difference between a successful program and one with added uncertainty and risk. Data analytics can allow your organization to gain more control over mobile employee risk, and it feeds so well into the execute phase you described earlier, Rachel. The more we know about our employees' whereabouts, the better we can model for the future and be able to track the return on investment in our hybrid work program. That's an important point, Maureen. And you know who has access to an abundance of data? The mobility function. Mobility really is the hybrid work hero. Without mobility, organizations really can't operationalize a hybrid work program, can they? Mobility is the function that is bringing together corporate tax, HR, payroll, finance, and legal to transform the talent agenda for the future. And with every disruption lies opportunities to learn, pivot and grow. Companies that can master this new digital workplace will not only survive, but also create competitive advantage by being able to innovate at speed, get products to the market faster, and re-engage with customers in new ways that are responsive to their own changing realities. With that, special thanks to Maureen for joining me today, and we look forward to continuing to sharing insights with you in future discussions. Thanks for listening.